I'm Don McAlpine, the Director of Photography on The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe. I'm partly dyslexic, so when I read a script, I probably read it a bit slower than most people. And even at that first reading, I'm starting to make scenes. And then on the second reading, I'm almost placing cameras in imaginary situations. Use this backdrop. I mean, that's something I've been cursed or blessed with. So when I do read a script, I do see a movie. And it's amazing, in some ways, how similar the final film ends up being to what I remember seeing when I read it. We're well into the camp on it, 27. I'm always looking for something I haven't done or something that truly will challenge me. And uh, so far I've been lucky enough to get my fair share. Action! I think the mood's good. It is good. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was really a reality drama, a piece of true dramatic filmmaking that happened to tell a fantasy story. Andrew wanted me to provide a solid, dramatic, true and sincere background with my photography. I had to go back and make the lighting look as though there wasn't lighting. Never do particularly extreme framing or extreme camera work that made you feel you're watching a movie. If this came back a foot then that might help that angle a bit. It's a game you play and you'd never really play it honestly, but you play it as well as you can. I'm asking the audience to forget that this is a, a screen and, and get in and believe what is going on. And are we doing the body makeup on that? Uh, I wasn't anticipating it actually. I kind of like the tone of his body though. Pre-production on a film like this magnitude is just an essential. I mean, you just cannot start a film like this without knowing very, very precisely where you're going. I just sit and listen to the director talking to me. I listen to him talking to the production designer. I listen to him talking about makeup, hair, wardrobe, to the effects people. I'm, I'm accumulating an immense amount of knowledge about this particular project, all of which I can use to probably get a good film and to exercise certain economies. How far are you yeah. moving, Pip? Yeah. How far are you moving? Up to that 16 feet. Oh, they can go. With these complex films like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, one of the things I think I've learned and Andrew intuitively knew was we had to guard against the straitjacket that all this preparation imposes on you. You have to always be looking for a better way of doing it. And even though you've done all the pre-production, all the pre-visualisation, all the storyboards, all the models and all the rest of it, that's what you fall back on if you can't really find a better solution. Because you're dealing with real people in not a real environment, but in an environment. And even children will show you something new. They say, oh, shouldn't I be, shouldn't I do, shouldn't I? I say, oh, maybe you should. And, you know, once they do that, then boom, there goes all your planning. But it's better, so you use it. So how are you, John? Oh, pretty good. And you? I'm cool. How are you? Now hold the camera nice and steady. Don't keep wobbling the room like that. Being a cameraman, I, I missed a lot of my children going up. And it was interesting to see the journey of those four children over a year. All change, all develop, all, I think, benefit from the experience of the, of the film. Don't look into so, the light! So you're there and then, then you go to her and you've got to get Working with children has the basic limitation that they're going to give you one good take and that good take is going to be almost an accident. So it means everything you photograph has to be usable. You have to go to a far more generalised, wider style of lighting. You can't have a beautiful beam of light coming down, hitting a little spot where you expect this kid to walk into it, do the marvellous performance and then walk out. 
from a purely personal point of view, the wonderful thing about a sound stage is the car drives you up to the door, you walk through the door, go to your chair, look at the monitor, and you're there. The whole world's in front of you, and you can plan precisely, do exactly what you want. Changing stop, go back to 17. But the serendipity that nature provides exterior forces you to a truth that you'll never ever get on the sound stage. So there. Okay, going to the far pan. Exterior, I find that sometimes the real magic will happen. The sun will light a mountain range in a way that you just can't dream that had happened. And of course, other days you can just sit in a tent while it rains. <laughs> Out here. Are your gloves on? Yeah, a little wider. All right, a little wider. Oh, yeah, that. From my professional point of view, one of the really successful elements of this is the integration of our stage snow, which we shot in New Zealand, and the relationship to the film we did in the Czech Republic. And it is probably the most seamless interior, exterior I've ever done. That all came out of the fact that I had a chance to see the Czech Republic before I shot the stuff in New Zealand. And it came out of a great heap of luck. When we went back to Czech Republic, there was no snow. They'd had the worst winter ever. And that night, down she came. Like buckets and buckets, feet of snow all over the place. Beautiful, white, clean snow that we'd bet on in New Zealand and exactly what we saw 12 months earlier. You realise that luck is, 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 is still part of the game. When you get down there, have a look where that camera is. I've been asked many, many times, why am I uh, still functioning as a cinematographer? Why, why am I still working? I've seen hundreds of very, very talented guys who've come and gone. Obviously, I can expose film and the films I shoot have some sort of style, but there's far more to it than that. There's far more to it than the technique. I, I think it's the relationships you've got to develop with all the other people around you, the constancy of, of, of doing work. It's blind luck too, I mean, let's be honest. It's, Luck plays a massive part in, in everyone's career. I, I, I guess it's just that somehow or other I can put part of me into the film.